Look at the pain in its eyes. Okay. Let's try this again. Testing. Okay, we're on. Don't press the mute button. Sync test. Okay, everyone. Oh, I'm so unbelievably excited. I decided to make a script. I typed it all up in the bathtub. So, I'm just gonna be reading it off my phone, if that's okay with you guys. I know most YouTubers would probably just talk. Well, if you're new here, welcome to Chill with Charles. I'm Charles, and I hate most YouTubers. Today, I'm gonna teach you all about who you really are and how to find it, and why you're actually incapable of being anything else. In my previous video, I spoke to you all about the importance of authenticity, but if you watched it, you'd know that that video did not go nearly as planned. That's saying it lightly. It was originally going to be much longer, more detailed, more structured, with a lot more editing and polish. I had so many points I wanted to make, but right away, I hit a snag. And it's a snag I've been tripping over my whole life. I'm someone you might call a limit pusher. Don't believe me? Here's a demonstration. And that was just the first one. I get my kicks in life by seeing exactly where my boundaries are and going, well, is this boundary really that set in stone? Could I stretch it? And if I can, how much and how quickly? When I decided to make a month's worth of videos for this channel in a Minecraft Let's Play format, that was actually an expression of that. I noticed that there was a part of me that was afraid to upload a video to YouTube in the current year that was just talking over Minecraft footage. Oh, I thought, what a tired format that is. No one would want to watch a video of intellectual discussion of a Minecraft gameplay. And then I saw exactly that concept had become not only popular, but it damn well became YouTube's latest gimmick. Intimate, personal conversations over Minecraft gameplay. Who would have guessed? Two. Oh, that was my wife. And then I realized, oh wow, there's actually been a part of me that wanted to do that forever. So that's exactly what I did. I not only broke my format, but I even did my first video without a script or any pre-thought. I just went for it. I said whatever was in my soul at the time. And if you didn't see that one, well, it was intense. I was yelling, I was crying, I was speaking something deep in my soul that I'd felt for so long and never expressed. And ever since then, I've been thinking about authenticity, about why it is that all of this wasn't stuff I was doing 10 years ago. Why now? Why did I wait? Trust me, we're getting there. So I make these little Minecraft philosophy videos, and then I take a break in April to work on other projects. I did not work on other projects. I told myself I was going to, I even got my team together and came up with a schedule, and I was well on my way to getting the first one done. And then, something hit me. All of a sudden, I lost all my passion for what I was doing. And it was scary. You know, I really felt like I'd gotten my creative edge back. That thing that used to inspire me to just create things like crazy and throw caution to the wind. And then came this feeling that just said, stop making that. And forgive my pun, but I didn't know what to make of that. I think it's important to note here for context, creativity is kind of my lifestyle. I'm kind of married to making things. So you can think of it like, it was as if I had finally gotten over an argument that I'd been having with my spouse forever about what we should be doing together only for it to come right back up a month later. I've had this terrible drought of passion for what I'm doing for so long, and I've been fighting it to be able to do what I love. So when I finally got it, only to lose it right again away, it was heartbreaking. So instead of making anything in April, I had a little powwow with myself, and I said, all right, I give in, what do you want? And my body told me, you need to take a break and focus on yourself for the rest of April. You can start making things again in May. And I said, all right, you know, I've, I've been fighting you for a long time, but that's clearly not getting me anywhere, so I'll listen. Turns out my body was right. I'd been so solely focused on being creative for so long that in the interim, every other aspect of my life had fallen apart. And I didn't even notice. I'd become so lost in ambition and addicted to success that I neglected every other aspect of my life. Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted so badly to be someone that makes things, that inspire the world, that I stopped being the kind of person that can inspire myself. So I took that hiatus, and boy did it help. I won't even go into it, because we'd be here all day. 
And when I came back at the beginning of May, unfortunately, I tried to do the same damn thing I was doing in April. I tried to make something ambitious instead of something I was inspired to make. But I was wiser now. I'd spent enough time with myself to know I was making a mistake. So as I visibly fought myself both to make the video and to not make the video, eventually, the authentic me won. And that experience was such a shock, I had to take another little break to assess that. But I come to you now a calmer man, a more confident man, a man who is doing exactly what he's inspired to do in a way he's inspired to do for reasons he's inspired about, which is to communicate to you, the viewer, how to find your authentic self. And as I hope I've made it clear, I'm speaking from experience, not just of being authentic, but of doing nothing but being inauthentic and figuring out how to stop. And the first lesson I want to teach you is the title of this video. You're not you. Easy. Oh, sorry. Every once in a while I have to turn my camera off because it likes to just shut off when it's recording and it's really far away, so I can't tell when it does that because it doesn't make a sound or anything. <sighs> I'd complain about being poor, but at least I have a camera. Anyways, you're not you, which is my attempt at a shorthand for this concept. Who you are encompasses a vast ocean of qualities and processes, and only one of those qualities, only one of those processes, is the part of you that you call you. Silly cats. By which I mean the part of you which experiences your life. The part of you that controls your behavior, that speaks your words, that thinks about your thoughts. This part of you, the entirety of your conscious experiencing of life, it isn't you. It's not even nearly as important as the rest of you. The best and maybe the most blunt way to show this is for me to simply ask you, can you beat your own heart? Can you digest your own food? Can you activate your own immune system? Can you use it to target specific problems in your body? Do you secrete your own insulin? Do you filter what you consume through your own liver and kidneys? Do you generate your own urine and feces? Of course the answer is no, but let's go deeper to make sure you really understand. Can you generate your own dopamine? To which some people may now say, aha, I've got you now, Charles. Yes, I can generate my own dopamine. I'm doing it right now, watching this video. To which I'd say, first of all, I'm flattered. But more importantly, no, you are not generating your own dopamine. If you could generate your own dopamine, you wouldn't need this video to encourage that. You could stare at a wall all day and just be completely enthralled with your own life. You do not generate the dopamine that this video is giving you. At some point after you woke up today, your body told you it wanted to use the device you're currently using. And then you listened. And you did it. Then it decided that it wanted to do whatever activity made you see this video. And then you listened. And then you did it. Then it decided it wanted to click on my face. And then you listened. And you're doing it. You did not have a choice in whether or not you felt compelled to do any of these things. You simply went along with every impulse along the way until you reached your destination, which is here with me. Almost sounds like I'm accusing you of lacking free will. And in a way, I am at least demoting the popular concept of free will. Because free will exists within a context of a chaotic universe that you have little control over. <sighs> chaotic universe. But little control is not no control. And it is sobering to realize that really the only thing that this conscious body part of ours does all day is make certain decisions about how to externalize what is happening inside of us and then execute those decisions. That is its only purpose. Other than that, you're a meat ship flying through space, baby. You're just plain sightseer. And this creates a hell of a problem when it comes to being your authentic self. Because what it implies, and the point that I am absolutely trying to make, is you're not exactly privy to what the hell your authentic self really is. And that point cannot be stressed enough, and indeed should not be misunderstood, so allow me to say it again. Your authentic self is not something that you are privy to. In other words, you don't get to know what it is. All you can do is try to make the right decisions, and you know you're doing it when things are always feeling alright. 
which is not a state of mind you can force or manifest with so-called free will. I ask again, can you generate your own serotonin? The answer is no. Well, what is serotonin? Well, at least in part, serotonin is the chemical hormone which governs your ability to feel content with life. So, if you want to be content with life, you are a slave. You can try as much as you'd like to fight your masters and ignore their advice, but they will always win. There is no more elucidating fact, in my opinion, than understanding that no matter what you do, and here comes the magic phrase, the phrase that has governed human life and society for millions of years, and that to this day holds an immense amount of weight in people's lives. Wait until you hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. You are beholden to a higher power than you. Oh! And that's what religion is about. That's what God is. That's the whole point of spirituality. It's the recognition, regardless of what it is called or how we choose to define it, that there is a power or a force of will, if you want to call it that, that is in our lives and in our environment that is simply beyond our control, beyond our comprehension, and beyond our ability to see. Because our consciousness is just one part of a whole tree. And we don't know if we are the branches, or the leaves, or the individual chlorophylls, or even the ants eating the tree. At the end of the day, we're all subservient to the tree. And if the tree goes, we go. So go ahead and call it whatever you want. Say that you're an acolyte of God trying to walk with Jesus. Say that you're a student of the Buddha and that you're trying to reach enlightenment. Say that you're blessed by the graces of Allah and that you look to the Prophet Muhammad for guidance. Say that you are attempting to live in accordance with the Tao. Say that you're an atheist, but that nonetheless, you do believe in such things as authenticity, being a good person. It's all the same wisdom that people are attempting to achieve, that they're dressing up in different perspectives, the core message of spirituality, that there is something beyond you that you are beholden to. These days we're living in a very disingenuous culture. The internet has made everyone afraid to be anything other than ironic and snarky with one another about the meaninglessness of everything. But in my humble opinion, this is merely a manifestation of the fact that as we have all been growing so much out of the closed-minded spaces that the Western puritanized world created, we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. We rejected repressive organized religion and its dogmatism, but we lost each other, and we lost ourselves. And we use this incredible technology, the internet, to chide one another on the ridiculousness of our nature, our behavior, and of our history. But it's just a mask. It's a mask for our deeply felt insecurity that perhaps there is nothing meaningful left for us in this world. And there is no shortage of peddlers taking advantage of this fact to manipulate everyone into believing that they have all the answers to provide a false sense of security in exchange for that most disgusting of material misappropriations of meaning. Money. So let me be the first to compliment you in a way that this world tends to discourage us from. You are not so easily understood. You are complex. You hold greater power than you could ever know. So the fact that you don't exactly live the proper way all of the time, that's not surprising. That's the default. Only those of us who are blessed in life with loving parents, resources, aka not living in poverty, a caring community, a society that serves the individual above and beyond the inverse, and a pathway through life that is full of all of the developmental experiences one needs to become attuned with their own nature, only when someone has all of these things can we even begin to criticize them for making inappropriate decisions. Although, he who is without sin and all that jazz, but, dear viewer, if that is not you, if you have not been blessed with an overwhelming and omnipresent ease of life, and a wealth of warmth and love, well, not only are you going to live an improper life, you'll probably never escape it, just speaking statistically. Your unhappiness is a blameless crime, because you cannot control your happiness. And if you can't, then it goes without saying that no one can control you either. So. 
How do we live an authentic life, since that's so damn important? I have to do what's right, even though I can't ever really know exactly what that is? Yep, that's the gist of it. And if you were expecting more, well then let me be the first to relieve you of judgment for your sense of entitlement. It is not your fault that you feel entitled to something better. You were raised to believe that you deserved something better. And who raised you that way? Who knows? It could be your parents, it could be society, it could be your friends. It could be the parents and society and friends of your parents and society and friends. There's no telling. So there's no use spending all day pointing fingers. Because you've got a very important job to do, Mr. or Mrs. Consciousness. You're supposed to be making proper decisions about your life and how to get closer to that authentic being that makes everyone so happy. And you're always getting that wonderful, beautiful gift you have, hijacked by the world and the experiences you've had in it. Always being manipulated by the micro bullshit of every bad actor who failed their responsibility to you that they probably didn't even know that they should have. Always being misdirected by all the impulses of your body that you never got to learn what the right response to even was. Well, I guess there's no mincing words here. You're fucked. You're beholden to a power that is beyond your understanding, that makes you suffer for things you couldn't possibly have known, and all of that suffering just gets exacerbated by all the crappy behavior of people and the corrupt machinations of society, and you're here just trying to survive and thrive. I guess you have no choice but to just accept that. And if so, let me be the first to congratulate you on taking your first step to living an authentic life. Only once we can accept that the default of life is suffering can we stop blaming ourselves for the problems of our lives. This is what makes it so damn hard to live. We're so afraid of the idea of life being suffering because we're already suffering so much. The problem is that no one told us that all that suffering is just life telling us to switch gears. Do something different, get a little stronger, get a little smarter, or just do something else. That's all suffering is. It's not some boogeyman out to get you. It's just another one of the bio-spiritual messages that the powers that be send you to say, you're in trouble, do something about it. It's not a condemnation of you. It doesn't blame you for the fact that you're suffering. It's just asking you to respond. It's asking you to access your response ability. Your responsibility. That's the meaning of that word. So, if you're suffering, you're living a life that is not authentic to your being. And it doesn't matter whose fault it is. All that matters is that you switch gears. Go look under another rock, because there's no holy grail here. There's just venomous spiders. So the next time, you feel suffering. Remember, you're not you. So stop taking it personally. You're not the one suffering. You're just the one that's charged with doing something about your suffering. So have some compassion for yourself. You're being piloted by an unreliable narrator, and so is everyone else. So don't hold yourself accountable for that. It's okay to not know what to do. It's okay to feel whatever it is you feel, to want whatever it is you want. You don't decide those things. You just decide what to do about it. So at the very least, make one decision. Stop blaming yourself and the world for your own life and take some responsibility for it. And since that word gets misappropriated all the time, let me be perfectly clear. No one gets to decide what your responsibility in life is, but you, and you're not you. So start learning about yourself before you go your whole life never knowing what the real you could be like. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.